Muhammadun Rasulullah وسلم, ultimate binary code. If we understand that reality then is a… the secret towards the Divinely Presence, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. See, last week, uh, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim al Haqqani was referred to as the Ghawth. What does Ghawth mean? Did I refer to him as the Ghawth or somebody on a sobat somewhere referred to it as the Ghawth? The Ghawth is uh, in the spiritual hierarchy of the government the head spiritual authority. So in this system of Muhammadan government is like a pyramid. So the base of the pyramid are many and then they become fewer as they become more advanced. So the base is made up of many of these awliya. So this whole structure consists of 124,000 awliyaullah. And as the structure goes up they become fewer and fewer until the one on the top who represents the highest Muhammadan reality that deals directly with Sayyidina Muhammad like a binary system in which the, that individual and that station is in a continuous binary connection with Prophet and that Prophet is in a continuous binary reality in which he is continuously on and continuously effaced. And that's in the Divinely Presence of Allah From that presence of Prophet describing, I have one face with Allah and one face to creation. That's in reference to the Ghawth because it's not creation as far as everybody coming up. That's uh, those hadiths and those descriptions from Prophet are the government hierarchy, not tariqah, has nothing to do with tariqah, the government hierarchy. And Prophet described, then if the amal of my nation is good, I say alhamdulillah. And if that amal, amal or actions of my nation are bad, I ask Allah's forgiveness. So that between Prophet and the Qawth nothing is, is given bad. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. that the whole structure of the hierarchy is to clean the nation and to clean all creation so that nothing bad goes to the presence of Prophet so that Prophet is always saying, Alhamdulillah. And that's the system of their souls are in a continuous debugging and cleaning. So for computers Allah gave us the same understanding so we would know the hierarchy but the computer is this way. Right? Your more advanced software you say down, not up. So the most used software everybody types. Then you break that code of everybody typing into sequences of letters and numbers, then shorter letters and numbers, then shorter letters and numbers until it's pockets of numbers, numbers, numbers all the way till you get to the bottom of the pyramid in computers and it's what's called machine language which is simple on and off and binary coding. And they say nothing can communicate in machine language except the machines because it's a system of 
binary on and off. That's for us to understand nobody can communicate with Allah nobody communicates with La ilaha illallah except Muhammadun Rasulullah So Allah gave us computers to understand ourselves. So each software that's more advanced uses less letters because the kalam has many, er many points of error. So when you type in long expressions, well you could be incorrect with a comma, with a dot. Right, so you want to reduce your letters into pockets of letters with numbers and those letters and numbers they stand for common phrases. So they use these phrases that people write and they make them into little pockets of codes until these pockets of codes are identified by smaller codes until they become pockets of numbers where this number represents this code. And these are all programming languages which they call higher languages. So that's the same system that is in the heavens. So the more applicable awliya, their, their language and communication, the base is very wide. So they're more common. As they do what they do, they pass the code to the higher levels. They clean from the ability of what they can clean just by virtue of the, their existence and their souls. Then what they're not able to clean, any code that needs more cleaning then goes to the awliya above them and then keeps going, keeps going until the awliya on the continent on which the seven continents are seven awliya who take all the pockets of information and they begin to purify everything so that every code goes up clean and purified and that the request of humanity would never go dirty into the heavens because of the dirtiness of people their prayers and codes have to be clean. So the system of, of sainthood is the cleaning process. And the one whom is in charge of that the Sultan al-Awliya then is beyond the understanding of this earth, it's about the whole of existence. The whole material creation is under the authority of that wali and that wali now in station is in the hands of Imam Ali salam. there's no one holding that. So that's not a position for people to think, oh this person is that, that person's… no, 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 that, that was… that system's gone. There's no one that can hold that trust because of the intensity of negativity and darkness. That's why we recited in now the Ali that if not for Allah creating Imam Ali for this purpose that he didn't pass away and that he's been hidden in his zuhur is hidden but Allah kept him on the earth as a safeguard to hold these trusts. So every tariqah in the last 50 years when the main shaykhs died who held the secrets of their tariqahs passed away or the awliya who passed away then those secrets were more and more reduced because of the darkness and difficulty of people and they didn't have an inheritor for the secret to continue on earth. Naqshbandiya holds that reality until the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. So as you see all the fountains of tariqahs around the world they don't really have any more teachings because the fountains have all been closed off. The one that remains open, the tap that remains open to the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi to safeguard and guide people is Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. So then that has its reality to guide and to teach people. And then the Muhammadan government then is the system of this pyramid and that's why the one whom above when he passes away then the ones whom were below at his feet will then be moved up because their souls each time are being trained in the different abilities and realities that their souls must perform on a daily basis and that they must be familiar and their practices must be in, in regards to those realities inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi, there's been a breakthrough in AI technology where it could read your thoughts. How can we prepare for such a future? I believe we, we have a video on that. Then I say the next generation of phones will read your thoughts. So these are again for people to understand the heavens. Everything that coming because Allah shows you on the horizon and shows you within yourself. Within the self requires faith. So the shaykhs are saying, okay your thoughts can be read by people. You say, no, no I can't, okay we can't argue with you. As soon as the technology comes out people say, hey they can read our thoughts. And that was because people, Allah wanted people to understand your thoughts are not that complicated to be read. The frequency in which you put out as an intention is vibrating all around you. So the shaykhs just pick up your frequency. Doesn't matter what your mouth wants to lie about because everybody's mouth is going to tell a nice story. But the frequency is what the truth is, right? So people come say, oh shaykh my, my kids are so wonderful, wonderful but they may be doing crazy things. But because the mouth likes to say what it wants to say, can you imagine shaykhs taking guidance from people's mouth? No, it would be like a, like psychiatrists and, and doctors in a hospital. They don't know, they have to go give you an MRI and an exam just to find out what's wrong with you. But the concept is that your energy is speaking, your energy is vibrating all its information out. So if your heart is tuned then you can pick up the information and the vibrations that people are putting out. If they try to conceal them then the shaykhs are also tuned and trained into understanding the intention. They can go very deep into the vibration of people. That's why they understand the intention of somebody versus the lips of somebody and that's where the danger of you know trying to second guess your shaykh. You say, oh you look like a nice guy, he was bringing tea all the time and smiling and saying nice things to you. Say, but that's because you only saw with your eyes but you know somebody ha can have a very bad intention deep within their vibration and the shaykh understands that and has to safeguard his community against that. So that's the reality of guidance. So they're not waiting for, for people to speak everything but we speak you know thousands through our heart and through our vibration. So these are all technologies that prepare us for judgment day. If God's kingdom is coming, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. If the kingdom of Allah is coming then I would imagine it, it's a sign for everyone that though what are you going to do in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi so when these realities come and, and the intentions of people can be heard then imagine the world that we live in. So it means then you train with your muraqabah and your connection is to control, control the whispering, control the bad thoughts, the bad energy, the bad uh, thinking. Don't think that okay I just didn't say it but you try to put into your heart not to even think it in the heart. So you try to do your salawats, your muraqabah so that you build the energy and who's doing that is the proximity of shaitan to the person. So when shaitan is too close what happens? Continuously whispering because he's the companion. So a bad companion or like a bad friend there's no difference. You know if you get a bad friend or your, your kid has a bad friend forget it you're in trouble. Because that bad friend is going to whisper so much into the ears that you know it, you, you're going to fall from grace like that. So there's no difference if it's a physical friend or shaitan is trying to befriend the person continuously advising. That's why don't act on the advice of shaitan, don't, don't, don't play with these things. You always have to say, Auza Billah and keep making salawat, salawats that good intention and, and good understanding to come and to, to build ourselves with goodness and khair and always expecting the goodness but you anticipate people's negative characteristics and what they negatively plan. So for shaykhs it's like a, a chess game at many different dimensions and levels. The people are moving at many different levels and they have to be sort of abreast of everything. 
And that is to chain the people for battle. A day will come in which the shaykh is going to guide people on what to do to keep themselves safe. And it's not as simple as just watch the front door, it's going to be many different issues coming from many different directions. So this is all just training for people to build their faith, have confidence and to, to follow. So that not to lose their footing and not to lose their position that they've established over the years. Because how do you trust people and test people with trust if they've never been tested with something trustworthy? That becomes then the, the, this is how tests come and degrees are given and rewards are given. If somebody's untrustworthy then you'll find in an event that comes you say, oh that person seemed to be you know of a cowardice and untrustworthy nature. So that's why these testings come in life and in our lives. So continuously Allah's testing so that to give rank and to give darajats to students, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is there a reality to a person who doesn't believe in every aspect of Islam but still has an immense good character? Yeah, good character is based on belief. So, inshaAllah. The one whom their character is good, then inshaAllah Allah guide them. So an old lady who's nice with cats and creatures and, okay this is good character, doesn't necessarily believe in Islam. But that's something different because they just have good character. And Allah deals with His servant accordingly. But to have belief in something. The foundation of that belief is based on good character. So not everything around is an orange and not all and but all oranges are round is the understanding. So in in reference to Islam its foundation has to be good character. But just finding people on the street that have good character that's a separate issue. That then Allah will judge the servant according to good character. But if you're going to be a Muslim the only thing that's important in your Islam is good character. Because imagine that you're, you have Islam but you're mean, you're angry, you're vulgar, you're aggressive then Allah doesn't need your Islam. <coughs> that's, the, that's the importance. So if we're going to go towards religion then the foundation of our religion should be based on good character. Now say, I want to compare it with a person who has no religion, then Allah will judge them accordingly but they didn't achieve these high degrees, they didn't achieve these lights in paradise. This is not always about being safe from being torn to pieces in the grave. It's not about surviving hellfire because we're hoping we pass that type of understanding. This is about your, your paradise stations that you're good you're believing, you're practicing, so now you want the very high paradise station then Prophet is coming because these are the schools of, eh, of maqam al-ihsan and perfection. This is not the school of production but these are the schools of perfection. So you say, I want to have a very high status to be near Prophet then say, okay then have good character. Above all, you know the pinnacle of your belief is good character. Otherwise your knowledge without good character is worthless, your deeds without good character are worthless. Some people anti-social their deeds are worthless. So it means all the character has to come to everything, that's what that becomes the importance. That's why we said all of your principles or, or pillars of Islam if they didn't make the person to have good character who needed them? So I've done 23 hajj but I yell and scream at everybody. So what was your hajj for then? Were you entertaining people? What was that for? So everything has to come back to akhlaq, adab and rabbi fa ahsanu fi ta'teeb. That Prophet's only claim is Allah sent me to perfect the character, inshaAllah.
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, if our Shaykh doesn't respond to us for a long time, does that mean he's not happy with us? No, means that you should be meditating and that if what you're asking is to be found in the meditation then don't be handicapped by waiting for a response. You know some people for years now they're emailing, I like this, I don't feel like this, I feel like this, I don't feel like this, I don't feel good, I don't feel good, I don't feel good, I don't feel good, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. A couple times they'll engage you with emails from the group saying, meditate, contemplate, connect your heart. But do you think that's going to happen for five years like that? No, because then you're not getting it. What you should have been getting is that you do this a couple times so that you b build the familiarity with the organization. Then you go to the email that you should be meditating means by now you should have made your connection, you should feel the energy of the connection and that that connection will get your guidance. That do your aura, do your wazifa, make your connection, nothing to fear. Sickness, everybody gets sick on a daily basis. Are you dying? No. Make your connection, make your connection and every email that's coming because of this pain, that pain, this, 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 that's because your connection is weak. So there's no more to email and keep telling the person this and this and this, they should have made the connection. So 90% of these emails are like that, that first few no problem they're coming new but the, they don't want to be handicapped from the realities, make a connection. If what you're asking for is an opening, what's the key? Your muraqabah. So they hold the key but you want to get it like this, that I want to talk to you and then give me the key. But that's not how they're going to give the key. The key is that you're going to make your connection, through your connection you're going to see them give you a key. And that's what's important is to receive the connection through the connection and the faiz becomes my opening. So that line of communication far more powerful than over the airwave frequencies because if one day they cut the internet how is everyone going to be connecting? That's why the people who are complaining about, oh don't teach connecting, don't teach the rabita, don't teach these things, okay then how are the people going to communicate when they cut the internet off? They're not, they're not good, they're going to be completely lost. But if you gave the basics that you have to connect, you have to visualize the shaykh, you have to make the madad, you have to read the, the chain and you have all of those, then the likelihood of our people having difficulty when they cut the internet is about 90% reduced because they say, oh no we've been trained. When they've been trained, look at our people, right? Very sharp, look at other people, very sloppy. They look sloppy, why? Because they don't care about the sunnah, they don't think it's an honour, they just think it's something you put on darvish clothes so that you can pretend like you're a darvish. We're not pretending to be darvishes, we're pretending to be from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad ambassadors and warriors for Prophet and the warriors for truth. Not physical, don't, don't let the NSA start to ring on the internet but spiritual warfare is supreme. Means that if your fight against devils is true then you should have been completely ready for it. Means that's faith, faith and action. So every step everything comes back to faith and action. If you truly believe there's devils and you don't have a taweez on you something's off. You don't really think they're coming after you? If you want we can make a du'a that you can experience that but you don't want that. So then you say, no, no shaykh I don't want things biting me at night and, 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 and really showing me that that realm exists. Then keep your taweez on, keep your practice on, keep your sunnah together to the best of your ability. 
and look good, look sharp because you represent Sayyidina Muhammad You want Allah to look at you that say, MashaAllah this is my nation, this is my preferred nation, my beloved nation. Especially in a world that they're putting so much importance on their appearance, at least the Muhammadan appearance should be spot on and perfected. These are all based on the khuluq and the character inshaAllah. So when they keep what they believe and they keep it strong then the proof becomes in their practices that they have everything that they believe in and they're very sharp, very strong looking and that's what's important. And the devils understand and devils understand these people are very serious in their belief. So alhamdulillah this is all that we need and when it begin to crank up and open up more difficulties, more difficulties then you begin to see, my goodness look what I've been prepared with. So inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum dear shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, so the people I've known for years starting to have very hardened political beliefs whether left or right, always non-stop sending that stuff on social media etc. Do I stay silent and neutral? Yeah, all you have to do is share our videos. Anywhere on social media, don't be a part of any political left or right because just by being of, in their groups you, you deem yourself like you're with them. See we're not a political people, we're spiritual people. Our warfare is spiritual, we want to fight devils, we want to fight the devil within. So post the sobats and head out. Let people know what you believe in that way they'll like you less. And if they do like you then alhamdulillah they're meant for you. If they're not you're keeping the wrong friends. So you, you're trying to hide who you are and you keep a bunch of devils around you. And then those are the same ones that become human whisperers because they're completely whispering, whispering, whispering. But if you one day come and just plant your flag in the middle and say, this is what I believe, you say, oh how 90% ran away. Then the ones who stayed most likely they're with you, they think it's interesting, actually I, I've, I've, I've watched those talks and they begin to communicate. But when you want to always compromise what you believe for the sake of other people and to make them comfortable, what actually happening is you just have a bunch of human waswases all around you all the time. And we said you have to at one point in our lives we have uh, comfort and solace in our solitude. I don't need a bunch of people just continuously talking garbage into my ear, I actually need to be alone. And when I do see people they all have the love of Prophet otherwise I'm not interested at all, I have no interest whatsoever in anything other than that. I'm very comfortable on my own and by myself because I'm not alone. So. Eventually we all get to that point if we're doing our practices and, and feeling it because it's too heavy that they talk, what's this garbage people are talking, what's the, what am I going to say with them? Plant your flag, let them know exactly who you are, what you believe and they probably throw you out of the group. That's a good thing, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. Sayyidi, what is the secret of getting our du'as accepted from Allah Azza wa Jal? Is keeping the love of Prophet doing your awrad, doing your zikrs. So that you understand that Allah opens to the love of Prophet So you do your muraqabah, you do the awrad, do the zikrs, make the connection as Prophet to intercede for us. That, that you ask if it's something good for me then say, Ya Rasulul Kareem that you ask Allah on my behalf that I'm in need of an opening and Salawat al-Fatiha that the Janab al-Haqq that by the virtue of his truth that he will ask Wasallam, Allah So it's the whole system, everything we taught is about that. So you have to go back to the meditation book, get the meditation book, learn the tafakkur, learn the contemplation 
and be more interested in getting your connection right than getting your du'as answered. This is a subcontinent thing, du'a, 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 because they really want Islam that is their way, some customized Islam that's for them, that I want it this way, I want this. I have so many things, I don't know why people have so much that they have to want, what is it that you want to want? If you make your connection and your connection is strong, you don't need to want anything, Allah seems to be giving you everything. But when you have a concept that, uh, no I don't want to do all the things, I just want to find a shaykh and say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, do it for me for this, do it for this. So that's the difference is that you make the connection, you make and feel the connection, then you know your heart is already connected, hey, what am I going to want? All I want is what Allah wants for me. Buridat Matloob, I beg your forgiveness and, and ask for your, your satisfaction. Then the connection closed. You know Allah then knows what you are in need of. And if you need something special that you want then in you put in your heart that if Allah finds it worthy then inshaAllah He grant it. But it's all based on the connection, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, can you please advise on how to keep our kids on the path if we are the only person in the family on this path, inshaAllah? How to keep the kids on the path if we're the only people on this path? Just make a good example, inshaAllah, that you see yourself with a good example, keep doing the practices and hope the imam of the, the home also wants to come to, to guidance so that the whole family comes to guidance and that inshaAllah the children will, will see the benefits and the effects of this. But if you allow the children to, to grow up to be wolves, it's very difficult to tame a wolf. When they were cubs it was easier. So that becomes then you know the difficulty of last, last days when children are like wolves and now you're trying to tame them. I would have uh, extra taweez in the house, put taweez in their cars, put taweez in their bedrooms and keep suggesting that they wear the taweez and inshaAllah it save them through their own hands and own crazy actions that they do. And, and to keep oneself sane and have a strong practice for yourself. And only through your strong connection can you begin to affect outside. Remember it's not the du'a for everybody, doing, doing, du'a for everyone but make your connection so strong that your energy and your connection is within the home and it's on everyone and radiates upon everyone. So more powerful than just continuously asking but to make yourself from that reality. So that that, that sainthood and that light resonates within your heart, your home becomes a maqam and that light is shining in the home saving everyone, guiding them even through the crazy actions that the children will make and so they come out safe from everything. InshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzata Min Yasifu Wa Salaam Ala Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ila Sharif Al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Kiram Wa Ala Mashaykhina Fi Tariqatina Ashbandiyyatul Aliyya Wa Sayyiru Saddatina Siddiqeen Al Fatiha Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.